Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm not in my shed, I'm not out in the woods. Where I'm at, I am in Ellery, South Carolina. Last weekend, I had the opportunity to go down to the Summerton Duck Fest. There, I met up with a numerous amount of duck callers, uh, duck call makers, and other, outdoor, other people that sold outdoor products. I did do a video on Big Lake outdoor products. They make duck calls. However, there was a lot of music in the background, and so I, in, in order not to get copyrighted, uh, I decided not to post that particular video. But today, I'm with Big Hugh and Little Hugh uh, McLaurin from Big Lake Outdoors, uh, outdoor products. They make a fine selection of duck calls. So we're just going to be sitting here and we're going to be talking about uh, about how Big Lake came about and about their duck calls. So y'all stay tuned because we're fixing to have some fun. Welcome, Big. Big Hugh, I guess, yes, and uh, Little Hugh. How are y'all doing today? Good. Great. Yes, sir. Um, you know, we I was able to meet y'all last weekend at the Summerton Duck Fest and you know that issue with the with the music in the background and i called you and i said hey you know i just can't do it this i can't do it but um i wanted to get with y'all come out to y'all shop take a look around start talking about some old duck hunt me and you actually got into some really good conversations <laughs> good, about the old duck good duck stories days. Uh, good. they were all true <laughs> all true <laughs> uh about the days in south carolina about, way back when yeah. um but i'm i'm here today and I want to talk to you about uh, Big Lake. Now, I've heard about Big Lake uh, duck calls for a very long time. I've seen a lot of your calls in, in some of the stores, especially in our, my hometown of Sumter. But uh, just very briefly, tell me how Big Lake, and, and you know, they got people out here that are from all over the country. They hear Big, big Lake, but where is Big Lake, and how did yeah. this all start? Well, I grew up in Sumter. The McLaurins left Scotland, ended up in Wedgefield. And close to there is uh, the Watery Swamp, and there's a hunting club there called Sumter Columbia Hunting Club. But the nickname, because right by the clubhouse, was a big lake. And they just, everybody referred to it as Big Lake. Right. My granddad took me there, my, and along with my dad. Now, he loved to fly jet airplanes and duck hunt. <laughs> and uh, he died flying a jet airplane when I was seven. That was 1962. My granddad took me there for another 25, 28 years. And all the great memories I had in Big Lake with my father and my grandfather, um, I just named the company in 2008 when I started it after the great memories I have with both of them. Correct. So you've been building duck calls since 2008 or were 2008, you doing Brian? I had a dream. I thought, how could anybody make something that worked this wonderful? And, uh, Long story how I got into it, but I got into it, made the first calls in 2008, and we did some design work on the, the, the board, the drafting board, to try to make a call that wouldn't stick or freeze or lock up, and they don't, and on top of that, it was the finest duck call I'd ever blown. Awesome. And I'm like you, an old-time duck hunter that grew up with the, the different brand name, almost right. all of them out of Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. And they make a fine duck call. But, oh, they do? But we just felt like, and still do feel like ours are better than anything out of any other state and um, kill a lot of ducks with them, have a lot of guides blowing them. But so we're in almost uh, October of 08. Here it is, October 21. So it's exactly yeah. 13 years. 13 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I've, I've seen your calls um, and, you know, like... Um, Simpsons Hardware and Sumter, right. you know, right. I've seen I've seen static displays right. um, all over, and uh, unfortunately, I guess for me, uh, you know, I I have never been able to have the opportunity right. to pick up one of your duck calls, right. um, especially in today's age where everything is prepackaged. You just can't break break an old call out and blow it in the store to right. to hear it, right. you know, and you so people get a little tendency to. Um, not pick them out of a you know sure, out of a package, sure. yeah. um, and the stores don't like it at all. In the old days, you could. In the old days, we could. They're on so, the counter or in a, an old candy jar. That's right. So hopefully today, before the day is over yeah. with, I can step outside and, and, and toot on y'all's calls. So uh, little Hugh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the the different style calls you have. Now I know that you have 
Uh, you have mallard calls and other types of calls uh, for other different species. Yep. Me personally, I am I'm not a mallard purist. Um, I like to hunt ducks, yes. period. Um, so I'm a big believer in uh, gadwall calls. I'm a big believer in pintails, widgeon calls, and even, and I know a lot of people are going to hate me on this, but wood duck calls, or as I call them, and we probably called them growing up, right. is summer duck calls. Right. Um, I, I know they work. I, they absolutely 100% work. So, But let's go back to the mallard call. And tell me a little bit about um, your different styles of calls that you have. Okay. We've got different sounding volume level calls for different situations or people that have different air volumes as well. We've got your traditional timber call, which has a smaller diameter hole in the tone board, so it's a little bit quieter uh, for that closer setting where they're close in. Uh, we have a traditional single reed open water call, a little bit louder. The di uh, diameter on the tone board hole is, is bored out a little bit more. We have a traditional double reed as well, a uh, very smooth, classic double reed, probably one of our top sellers um, because it's wonderful for people just want something easy and smooth or a great starter call because it has a little bit more forgiveness in it as well with that double reed. Um, one of our kind of more unique things that we have, um, based off of the double read, if there is a takeaway or drawback, a lot of people feel sometimes double reads in general do not have enough duckiness to it. Right, so dad, you don't have that rasp. That's correct, the raspiness. Typically you've got to growl to get raspiness. Dad took the thought of Tennessee real foot calls have, that are very traditional, old school, been around with uh, metal reeds, what if you put a metal reed in with a plastic reed and had a plastic and metal double reed? And by doing that, we have something that we feel is a little bit more unique to Big Lake. When the vibration of that metal reed rings, you get the raspiness that you'd otherwise have to growl to get, and it amplifies the volume as well. So in our T-Rex model, it's on a little bit of a quieter tone board. Um, our D2, T2, both of these have the plastic and metal. It's on a competition tone board, lots of volume. So the guys that like big water, cut down style calls are using this D2T2. People that like it a little bit closer in are using the T-Rex. And these are becoming what we're more well known for and what we're seeing a lot more sales in because it's given a unique sound that's not true. Well, that really brass awful. reed and that, and that plastic reed. That's correct. Yeah, you, um, you actually, <laughs> again, I, I can't, Hate to keep referring back to last weekend sure. with the with the with the Summerton Fest, but you gave me a sound a sound file uh, right there in the parking lot, sure. and again I can't use it because of the music in the background, but I heard it and I was I got excited <laughs> because I am um, I'm a I'm a cut down call guy. Yes. I, I like cut down calls. Um, I do have double reads. I have single reads. I, I have them all. I even have a triple read. But that growl that came out of that combination of that brass and that plastic. Stainless was, steel. Actually, stainless steel. Stainless steel. Uh, it, it just gave it a, a unique sound that, uh, that was almost, it was almost of the days um, when, when they first started cutting those PS ults and turning around backwards. It was just that growl to it, and I really, really did enjoy it. Well, what's unique about it is the cut-down calls, they're awesome, and there's a huge following for them, but it's almost like it's specific to a certain situation. Right. Um, ours on the J-frame gives you the volume capacity to compete, in a sense, be level with a cut-down, but has the variability in tone and sound like your traditional call, so it kind of hits on all the perfect aspects of what a duck hunter is desiring for. They want to be loud and crazy. And they can get very soft Correct. or very loud. Very I don't loud. know of a call that is that wide on the spectrum. Super loud, super quiet. Okay. Cut awesome. downs are pretty much super loud, and that's it. Right. They're just a nasty call in the timber. So that's we right. can use them 25, 30 yards away. We can use them. We've broken ducks hundreds of yards away. The other people say, I can't touch it with what I'm blowing, and I'm using them metal plastic reed combo. I can't wait to when we when we're done uh, to get out there and hear it again. But uh you also do competition calls too, we right? We and can you uh, talk about a little competition calls? Uh, what's yeah, going on? Yes, um we ours we we've, we've had uh two or three state champions win it. Um 
And what they tell me is we have the, Echo has a great top end. Um, a lot of people feel like the bottom end is not as ducky as it should be. R&T has a super bottom end. Uh, but they tell me, and, and I play Sir twice, that we have the top end of an Echo and that super growly, raspy bottom end of R&T. But um, some boys are taking it all the way to the world and won the state with it. The about the competition calls is during the Duck Fest, we had two regional uh, right. Uh, calling contest, and you judged both right. of them, did you not? Right. Okay. Right. And you've had, you said you had three go all the way to the state? I've had two two young fellows that have won it, I think, three times between them. Okay. And uh, and gone all the way to the world. And gone all the way to Arkansas. Blowing a big lake call. Right. Blowing a big lake call. That's, that is, that's, yeah. that's per I mean, it's, um, I know when people think of South Carolina, especially nowadays, they don't think of of, of a lot of duck hunters, and they don't, you know, they, they say, "Oh, these guys travel a lot." They don't know the history, the rich history that we have in, in South Carolina about duck calls and duck call making. Right. Even some of the some of our best carvers back in the day came from the, the coast of South Carolina. Absolutely, yeah. And and it's just it, to me, it's just it's just really enjoyable. To sit here in my home state and talk to people and talk with guys about duck calls. I mean, and, and making duck calls. As we were saying earlier, you know, duck hunting uh, has a great heritage. Right. And uh, can you elaborate on a little bit of that? Yep. Well, the the rice, the greatest rice culture in the world was Georgetown, Charleston County. Right. And so where were the ducks? Georgetown, Charleston County. Right. It went away in 1865 with the end of slavery, and as we're certainly glad it did. They stayed around for another 130 years. And the greatest duck culture was here. The rice started to get planted somewhere else called Stuttgart. Right. Where did the ducks leave? Here to go to Stuttgart. Yeah. And uh, so it's just built into our genes. And I've gone, and you have too many states, and they'll say, the greatest duck hunters we've ever seen are from South Carolina. Right. And it's just built into us and we crave it. We've got to have it. It is. It's just, it's, yeah. we're duckaholics confirmed. <laughs> we're addicted. This is where it started. And, you know, to blow calls that we know will call in a duck. If there's something better, God's keeping it to himself. Right, that's right. It's just absolutely, he's keeping it to himself. Exactly. Now, we, uh, you have some, we, you know, we talked about the competition call. We talked about yeah. just strictly mallard calls. But we are duck hunters at heart, right, right, and right. I am uh, quite sure that y'all are the same. Yeah. Competition is great. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not a competition call. I have never been able to blow a high ball in my right. entire life. Right. I'm yeah. a meat right. hunter, yep. um, and I'm assuming you you're too. the you're the same way. You're mm -hmm. we're duck hunters at heart. Um, but let's talk about some of your other calls. Um, I know that you Big Lake, and it, when I started looking into the science of summer duck hunting. And, and mm -hmm. to guys, for a lot of y'all, you've heard me say this, I call them summer ducks. Most people call them wood ducks. Right. But there's an actual science to hunting uh, wood ducks. I mean, even with decoys, I've had them decoy in. Sure. Uh, I've, I've used jerk strings, I've used decoys, I've used calls. But I do know that Big Lake is, that's how I found out about Big Lake. Right. was because of their wood duck call. Yeah, right. And I know you've got a great call. It's small. I, I want to find the smallest call in the heat of battle of wood duck, wood duck, wood duck. And I want to reach for the smallest call. The Lord did it, but we made it a super short barrel. <laughs> right. And it's so easy to blow. <laughs> and uh, kids get them, six, five, six, seven years old. We see them a year or two later. They say, you can't believe the ducks we call in. They work. Tell them about all the and, Louisiana reports. And, you know, a guy called from Louisiana, he said, and we started calling it the world's best wood duck. He said, it's the world's best wood duck call. And I said, well, tell me, you know, how are you using them? He said, we only call them in on the water. We make them swim into the decoys. Mm -hmm. We know they're in these big swamps. We call, we make them swim in, and we use nothing but big lake wood duck call, perfect woody. And we only shoot them with four tens. With <laughs> four tens. <laughs> I said, are you a swamp people? <laughs> he said, yes, we're swamp people. He said, I want one in wood. I want one in acrylic. I want one in 
uh, polycarbonate dipped in camo. So we have different tones. It sounds like different birds. He said, I'm telling you, it's the world's That's awesome. greatest wood duck call. <laughs> and I was flattered. And we started using that on our cardstock. Uh, right. But it, they really work. And uh, I didn't know if you could call in a wood duck. But I said, I'm making a wood duck call. We made a trip to Mississippi, and it was hundreds of them. They were killing our four mallards. Had no wood duck call. I said, I get back, I'm making a wood duck call. And I've learned you can flat call them in. You can call yeah. them in. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it more times than, yeah. than none. Yeah. But uh, you also have a widgeon. Now, I noticed on your land you actually have a widgeon call. Right. That's Now, when I when I think of whistles, you know, yeah. the, the, the thing that comes to my mind is the six-in-one. You know, right, you right, always right, see right. The, the little six-in-one. And they were really, everything. really great. Really but you have, you have made one this, just for that. We've got pintail calls and a widgeon call that are made by a company in Brazil. Been making bird whistles for almost 200 years. And uh, we partner with them, and we it's Murillo. Right. Uh, bird whistle. And we tell people, but it's people that are hunting for Murillo whistles, can't find them. Yep. And and we've got them in the United States. Right. And uh, you can make a great widgeon call. <laughs> but it's, this is really a pintail call. But they make, ball. got a roller ball in it, just blow into it, but they make a widget go. So, I like to care a little bit of everything. And if I see a pintail... Yeah, because this one right here looks uh, real similar to the old, um, the old wing setter, I believe it was right, called. Right. The wooden wing setter. What, what some people did was they patented the exact copy of these calls. And patented it and my understanding is this guy went out of business okay um, if you look at the primos call it, very, very, it, it appears that they copied this okay but I'm selling the original out of Brazil all right and, and wood has a softer tone softer tone more right. mellow tone to it more mellow now you also have a, a, a gadwall call as well right. right as far as we know it's the only um, acrylic it, we got them in some really pretty colors that's royal oak pearl and it's a gadwall call and it also makes a good hen blue wing or green wing. So it's a neat call, and it will flat call in a gad wall. Yeah, it really will. Yeah, I, and, and like like I said, I'm a I'm a I'm a I don't differ. I mean, when it comes to ducks, I want to shoot ducks. That's right. When and you got six, and you can only kill four, you, or, or oh, here two, <laughs> for two now. Yeah. So. But you know, I put out a multi-species set. Right. Right. You know, I have right. mallards, I have black ducks, I have widgeon, I have pintails, teal. I have teal. You know, I'll put out, um, you know, wood duck decoys. So I have a, right. and you need to make those noises. Right. You you need Absolutely. to make the you right. need to make the calls that they're doing. So yeah. right uh, to have these calls, I mean, it's it's. You know, I know there's a lot of guys out there that that that, that just blow mallard calls, and that's right. all great and well. That's all we used to do, and that's all we used to growing yeah. up. That's all we did. And right. the only time we blew something that maybe sounded like a wood duck is we cut a shotgun cut a shell. shell off, cut a shotgun <laughs> shell <laughs> off, and tried to whistle into it. Right. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Right. But I, I want to thank y'all so much. Uh, I I really enjoyed this this little trip, um, yes, guys. You know. It's funny because I live by road. Um, it takes me about an hour to get here. If I was to drive to the nearest boat land and put my, my boat in the water, it would take me about 20 minutes to get here. Um, so guys, if you get a chance, go on the Big Lakes website, uh, take a look at their calls, give them a call. Uh, if you happen to be talking to them, let them know that you saw this uh, video sure. and um, that, that you saw it on here on Daddy Duck 365. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I spent a, probably about five or six hours here uh, with Hugh McLaurin and his dad. His dad had to leave a little bit early. But uh, as you can see, we, we talked ducks. We talked duck calls. We talked about the company. We even, he even turned a call out, uh, rough cut one out. Uh, had a really great time. Hugh, I just want to thank you so much for having me. and uh, enjoyed this whole time yes. we spent together. Yes, it's been great to meet you, Matt. And I think it's what we're all interested in is duck hunting, but also making friends in the duck call industry right. and what sharing the passion we have. And I've enjoyed, enjoyed it as well. So well, I appreciate it, buddy. 
And guys, if y'all looking for a duck call, listen, look down in the description below, Big Lake Outdoor Products. I'll have a, a link in the description uh, to their Facebook page, to their website, how you can get in touch with them if you want a nice, very nice custom call made. But other than that, we will see y'all next time on Daddy Duck 365.